certain waves. That is exactly why we call some of these waves heads, uh, which we now know as radio waves. Now, heads also discovered that radio waves could reflect off solid objects, and inside that would later be used to invent radar. Now, in 1890s, Marconi developed the first equipment for long-distance radio, transmitting a signal over 32 miles. But uh, here's the catch. Radio communication was only possible via telegram by using the Morse cord. Now, 1900s, Reginald A. Fezenden became the first person to send long-distance voice audio signals over the radio. And in the 1920s, the radio began to be used commercially with the first broadcast station, KDKA, launching out of Pittsburgh, PA. By 1930, nearly 60% of American households had radios. 1930s became the golden age of radio, and uh, with top shows including Amos and Andy and The Shadow. In 1938, the radio adaptation of H.G. Wells, The War of the Worlds, caused widespread panic in the U.S., as many listeners feared that they were listening to a real news report about a, a Martian invasion. In the 1940s, the Armed Forces Radio Service was formally established, broadcasting commercially, commercial free original programming, including command performance, mail call, and GI Jive. The 50s saw the first transistor radio, the Regents TR1, introduced at only five inches in height. Music and information became instantly portable bathing a, ro a rock and roll revolution. So in short, that's the evolution of radio. And of course, you remember, we have seen quite a lot of shapes and everything else coming. And what we have today is uh, a mobile uh, telephone that carries radio, that carries TV, that carries everything. Gone are the days when you used to have those six-legged uh, stereos sitting in the corner of your home, and with those long, the LP, the LP is that you would have to stand there when it finishes playing, and then you have to <laughs> reset, reset it again. You don't have to do that. And of course, we've come a long way. And for Namibia, uh, the music age has, has been aged out, and uh, quite a number of radios now, they are going into talk because that is exactly where the people are. The people who were listening to music uh, in the 1990s, well, most of them, they still do, but they've moved on. They, some, they want something mature. And this is exactly why you see quite often now uh, most radios that are coming up. And of course, including us, uh, we are championing talk because that is where the real thing is. Gone also is the era where we were supposed to listen to music only and forget all our problems. Now we need to talk about our problems right here, right now. Now, I, that was good and all, the celebra and all the celebrations and everything else with the Deputy Minister of ICT last week saying um, journalists must cross-check facts and make sure that whatever they are going to announce is proper and um, it has gone through fact-checking because radio is terrible. If you look at what happened in Rwanda in 1994, that resulted in almost about a million people being massacred. It was because of a radio station. Uh, yeah, so we need to be uh, responsible when it comes to that. It's 12 minutes past seven. Now, another um, good story that's coming from Namibia. <coughs> Excuse me. It's about um, a doctor who is aged 27. Now, although she, she, has, she has been honored by the British Queen uh, with a Commonwealth Points of Light Award, she has been doing some good work. Now, I've seen her name quite often, and um, I never knew that this was what she was doing. It was during the COVID period, I want to believe, uh, Dr. Esperanzi Luvindao was, um, and she is still delivering free online consultations to more than 44,000 patients in hard to reach rural areas across, across Namibia. And the story says she, is, she has been doing this since 2019. And then um, she also established um, a one step at a time initiative that has helped more than 35,000 Namibians by purchasing crucial medication and medical equipment for the village health practices 
and has played a key role in the supporting the country's vaccine campaign in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Now, I'm saying I didn't know that um, I knew this name. Uh, she, she has been in the news quite often. But um, these things that are coming up now, some of the things that she has been doing, these things I didn't know that she was doing all these things. Now, it has taken the Queen of England, the British Queen, to uh, recognize her. It has taken the Queen to recognize her for her to end up in, this, in the papers like I'm sharing with you. I'm not quite sure whether we didn't know what she was doing or that we just got to know about this when the uh, honor came through. But the honor is called Commonwealth Points of Light Award uh, for delivering free online consultations to more than 44,000 patients. That is in a hard to reach rural areas across Namibia since 2019. And the website, um, according to a website, Points of Light, it says Luvinda. started offering the sessions after working in northern Namibia and noticing the difficulties underprivileged citizens experienced accessing health care with many patients having to travel long distances of over 50 kilometers and waiting up to 10 hours to see a doctor. So I'm not quite sure what happened. Maybe uh, some, of these, the, some of these things, they happen and uh, we may not know, but... Um, this is this is um, the magnitude of how she manages to do this and the time because most doctors will tell you that they just don't have time. They just don't have time to do all these other things that they must be doing. And it becomes a diff difficult. Even to get a comment, they'll tell you they just don't have time. Now, doctors like lawyers, you need to pay. Every other time that you spend with them means you have to pay them. But here... Yeah, we are at 27 years old. She's she's managing to do things without thinking about money. For her, it's not about money. It's not about money for her. It's about um, saving the people. But once again, I need to say this: this is the time that we need to recognize our own people. We need to recognize our own people. I'm not saying what the queen did is wrong. But all what I'm saying is, this recognition was supposed to come through us. It was supposed to be us. Still, since we are part of the Commonwealth, then maybe it's still us. But it's time that we need to recognize our people and make sure that we have put them on the map. For whatever reason, we need to do that. All right, and um, the, 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 there is another interesting story. Uh, uh, of course, we had a conversation here with the marathon runner, that is uh, Hilaria Johannes. That was in 2019 or early 2020 when we were just starting. Now, she is telling a story here. She's telling a, she's telling a story, and that story is about how she started. And um, we just need to... I'll take a short break now because I need to... Um, breathe in a little bit and then I'll come back um, and then give you some more on Hilaria Johannes and what she is doing. I'll be back after this. To our valued listeners and all Namibians, we are living in unprecedented times which have seen some extraordinary steps being taken, some of which have suspended the most basic of human rights. And this is because for the first time ever since our country won its independence, we have been hit by a dangerous virus, which is a threat to our livelihoods, the COVID-19. The situation calls for us not to panic, but to work together and eradicate the spread of the virus. At Eagle FM, we urge you to always wash your hands with soap or use hand sanitizers, limit or avoid travel and respect our laws and obey authority. We have the answer, and we will fight this the Namibian way. As Namibians, together, as one Namibia, one nation. Let's stand together against COVID-19. All 
right, welcome back. I said it earlier on with these cameras on, even when you want to cough, you can't cough while all the people are looking at you. That's, that's what happens. So you have to ask, can I cough? Can I cough? And someone is to make sure that you are coughing in secret. Now, the story is about jo Hilaria Joannes, and um, she's uh, saying that she started running barefoot. And according to her, she says uh, when she started out, uh, she ran barefoot until she ended proper running sho shoes. Joannes has collected more accolades for her running than she can remember. However, these achievements did not come on a silver, a silver platter. She worked hard for them. That's a fact, yes, of course. Now, she said she ran barefoot because she didn't have the means to buy herself proper running shoes. Now, in her own words, <clears throat> sorry again, she says, I was selected to run in Botswana, and that is when I received my first pair of running shoes. It wasn't an easy journey, but I preserved short commitment and hard work. Now, some people want things on a silver platter. Life doesn't work that way. You have to work hard for what you want, and God will meet you halfway. Because of the trials she went through, she said she tries to give back as much as she can to deserving athletes. She mentioned that she buys training shoes for her team whenever she can. And she says in her own words, I take care of the kids I run with, I have to, because I was once in their shoes. They run beside me and I want to make sure that they are comfortable as training on the road for major competitions can be tough. So we learn from the best. There she is. Now, life is not easy, and life was never <laughs> meant to be easy. Now, I had a chuckle during the weekend because someone <laughs> said, look, we are being told that we were born in sin, we inherited sin from Adam and Eve. But then uh, King Solomon was worth $2 trillion US dollars. No one is telling us that. We need to inherit King Solomon's wealth, $2 trillion uh, that was apart from the gold and the stuff that the king had, but no one will come to you and say, look, uh, you inherited the king, so Solomon is uh, uh, part of wealth. No, but what we inherited are sins from Adam and Eve. Something that people say and something that is so interesting if you want to look at it, though. All right, uh, the villager, we on, on uh, Friday and Saturday as well as um, Sunday, we carried lots of stories, and some of them were breaking news stories. And I need, if in case you haven't yet subscribed for free, so that you can be receiving a copy of the e-villager every evening throughout the week, you can send your number to our WhatsApp number 0812004144, 0812004144, you can send. Now, there is good news that Agri AgriBank's latest market watch, according to our story last week on Friday, predicts that Namibia's economic performance will improve slightly in 2022 due to pockets of growth in several sectors. The bank said that mining and quarrying are expected to grow by 10.3% in 2022 on planned, on planned mining expansions. Moreover, the bank said the growing global push for the green revolution has increased the demand for rare earth elements. The Namibian mining industry is a significant player in the elements supply chain. Now, the sector was the highest GDP contributor in the third quarter of 2021, registering a growth of 41.9% compared to a contraction of 33.1% in the same period in 2020. So that's good news. At least we need to smile when we get something like this coming our way, because we, who knows, maybe with all the things that are going on, we might still be, there will be some people who can still get jobs and then be living the lives that they aspire to. So growth, according to the AgriBank's latest market watch, uh, 2022, we are looking at, um, this is the mining sector though, at 10.3 percent. That is for the mining sector. Now, this is coming at the back of uh, Dundee uh, precious metals at Tsumeb. I've got that story coming later on, saying that they want to let go of more than 800 people. They want to, to retrench more than 800 people. And now, when you look at these reports coming from banks and you juxtapose them with what is happening on the 
ground, sometimes you start to doubt to say, is this real or is not real? But forget about that. Agribank's latest market watch report says, or predicts rather, that the mining and quarrying sectors are going to grow by 10.3% in 2022. That is um, including mined, my planned mining expansions. And the other time I shared with you the story of rare earths, metals or minerals that are plenty plus in Erongo. And I was saying that uh, we are sitting on what we don't know, the value of um, such a rare earth, earth, earth minerals. We don't know the value, but we are sitting on them. And they are so valuable that even the, elect the electric cars that uh, Kevin was talking about here, you won't be surprised to uh, know that some parts of th those cars could be made using what Namibia has. But we know that. So we need to know uh, what we have so that we can be able to stand up and beat our chest and say, we have got this. If we hold this back, you won't get what you want. Now, another story <clears throat> that we have in the villager is the money that GIPF has um, uh, channeled into various sectors. Um, that is with Erongo region receiving over 551 million of capital from local pension savings. That is from the government in institutions pension fund, GIPF. Now this was the announcement made last week in an update after the board of trustees of the fund paid Kete scores on two of its unlisted investments, investment projects in the town of Welsh Bay. Now they are saying for a wrong region only, the pension fund has channeled 551 million Namibia dollar for um, use by unlisted investment projects. And then there's another story in the Namibian that also says that uh, GIPF's unlisted investment projects are doing so well. And there are quite a number. And of course, we have been saying a lot of things about GIPF. There are a lot of things that have, were not done the way they were supposed to have been done. But there are also a lot of things that are now being done the way they should be done anyway. And um, the biggest issue that we have with us is we use the same brush to paint everyone. Well, in the beginning, yes, and there's always the talk when people talk about the sins of GIPF, they always talk about the 600 million. And then you tend to say, so the 600 million is overshadowing all the good works the other unlisted investors have made. Their houses, Osona, for example, and there are a lot of um, un unlisted uh, project projects that are going on, or there are a lot of projects that are being carried out by unlisted GIPF in the investment funds. A lot of them. But whenever you talk about GIPF, people will start talk, talking about the 600 million. So you, well, it might be a painful thing that that money was lost, but it wasn't money that was lost because from what we understood later, uh, that was part of the profit, right? Because if you put in money, you expect to get something in return. But the profit didn't come through. In some cases, GIPF managed to recoup what they had put through by selling off assets of the people who had failed to pay. But we will be still going back. Whether we understood what it means or we don't understand what it means, the media says the 600 million was stolen from GIPF. So the story becomes GIPF, GIPF. And a lot of things that are happening, we tend to forget. Let me say this again. Uh, we do not have a culture of money. Uh, we, most of us were not brought to manage a lot of money. And this is exactly why when we have got a lot of money in our accounts, you cannot pass by an ATM without going to check if it is still there. But what you don't know is every time you insert that card to check, you are charged. So every time, if you go to check 10 times over, you are charged 10 times over per day. So there's a lot, we need to balance things. When we find fault, we also must say, well, this was done well, but what is being done now 
and we follow up to clean up the act. Because the picture that we put out there matters so much. Now, President Age Genkop um, attended the One Ocean Summit, summit and uh, this is the story that we also carried uh, over the weekend. And this is exactly why we are saying there's no need for you to wait for Monday to get a story that would have happened on Thursday or Friday. You can subscribe to be receiving the e-villager for free. The number once again is 0812004144, 0812004144. And we do this every week, every day. The villager comes out around nine. If we go past nine, uh, something might have held us back. But we make sure that every day at nine, we are out. We are out every day at nine. So we will make sure that we deliver it in your inbox, right? You don't have to do anything much. You just sit at home and you will see our villager uh, dropping into your inbox any time before nine, nine every day. And when, when we say every day, we mean every day. That is what we do. So you need to just subscribe for free, 081 <laughs> and then you'll be getting it. And this is the story that we carried uh, where uh, the president said um, that Namibia will throw its support uh, for behind the new reformed high-level ambition coalition for marine bi biodiversity in marine time areas beyond national jurisdiction. And um, he also said um, that... Um, the, the work of the panel based, uh, among others, on a three-track a three approach, the political track, the action track, and the knowledge track, with each track emphasizing commitment to sustainably manage 100% of the ocean uh, under national jurisdiction through sustainable ocean plans by 2025, provides us with the necessary impetus to reverse coastal erosion, loss of biodiversity, and ocean degradation. That is what the president said. Maybe I didn't read that well quite clearly. Let me take it again. He said the work of the panel, uh, based among others on a three-track approach, the political track, the action track, and the knowledge track, with each track emphasizing commitment to sustainably manage 100% of the ocean under national jurisdiction through sustainable ocean plans by 2025, provides us with the necessary impetus to reverse coastal erosion, loss of biodiversity, and ocean degradation. That is what the president said. And that story, we carried it on Friday. That was for our Saturday paper. Now, again, another developmental story. Um, that's in the villager. And you really need to rethink if you haven't subscribed yet. The government has allocated $30 million to the Kunene region for its program for communal land development, that is PCLD in response to the land question and agrarian reform. The program was recently introduced to the region by the Minister of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform, Kalesh Latvine, who visited Korikas and Opo, seeking inputs from various stakeholders, including regional leadership and traditional authorities, to run the program efficiently. Now, Schlatvine said his ministry is cognizant of its mandate to read to redistribute land and address the land question in socio-economic and political issues. Now, he also noted that the ministry has developed various programs and projects to respond to the skewed nature of land ownership and lack of access by most Namibians. In his own words, the minister said the program for communal land development is therefore one of Namibia's most important land reform programs. Now, the program for the development of communal land kicked off in 1997 when Cabinet approved the small-scale commercial farms development program based on vision or underutilized land having been identified in various regions, namely Zambezi, Kavango East and West, Omsati, Oangwena, Oshkoto, Oshana, Oshozonjupa, and Omaeke regions. Now, this is brilliant stuff here, 30 million for Kunene region only. Now, there is also a story in one of the papers that says 2 million of this 30 million will be channeled to uh, water. 
that the people in Kunene, as we know, even if other countries, other parts of the country are receiving rains, Kunene most of the times is dry, dry like a bone. But um, two million of these 30 million, I want to believe, will be set aside for water, boreholes and that uh, kind of stuff. So that's the um, other story that you can get in the e in the e villager. You need to just subscribe, and we will be sending it to you for free. If we take long to send it to you, then it means that we are still sifting through the numbers because sometimes we are overwhelmed with numbers. Because we actually believe, like um, the way you have tuned in to Eagle FM this morning without you paying a cent, we also actually believe that um, the news that we put out uh, through the e-villager must be free for you to, news must be free, like the air that you breathe. It's not the oxygen that you need to pay for when you are on uh, in hospital and uh, COVID is trying to uh, take you down. No, it's not like that. News must be free. Our sources, they give us this news for free. And um, yes, and then we meet each other halfway. That's what we believe. It's 26 minutes to 8. If you are just tuning, me, tuning in now and uh, you need to be on your way to work, but I would suggest that uh, you leave home early so that you avoid the rush hour. Because when you are rushing, then you get angry when someone cuts you in and you feel that they are, they are disrespecting you. Now, another story that uh, the e-villager carried on Friday is that uh, Omsat Governor Njala says um, that people who are saying an instrument that is being used on an asparagus farm is disrupting the rain in the region. But the governor says this isn't true. Uh, it's believed that there's a farm where the farmer is using an inst instrument on harvesting, I think, or even preparing asparagus. Now people in the region are then saying, uh-uh, it's because of that machine that the rain is not falling. Now I was trying to connect because I couldn't stop myself from laughing when I read that story. How do you connect that machine to whatever happens in the atmosphere for you to come to a conclusion to say, it's that machine that is holding back the rain? Maybe, because people have got their own way of looking at things. Maybe that is exactly what is happening, but the governor is saying it's not true. Now, according to the governor, the rumor started in 2019 during the election campaigns. And he said um, the person who started spreading that information wants to confuse the nation for his personal interest. He only talks about, uh, he only talks about it, uh, about its disadvantages but not its advantages. That is, he only talks about the asparagus's disadvantages, but not its advantages. That is what the governor says. And he also challenged the residents of the region, of the region who are unhappy with the projects to approach the ombudsman's office so that the matter could be investigated. In his own words, the governor says, the person who started making those alleg allegations is a public <coughs> enemy attempting to create tension between the government and the public. So what is asparagus? Now, when the governor says um, the person is, no, is not talking about the advantages of asparagus, but only focusing on disadvantages. Now, if you eat asparagus, which is a form of a veg, a veg table, uh, it doesn't have fat. It's free of fat. It's free of sodium and cholesterol and it's packed with many key nutrients. That is, it contains vitamin B that uses to make DNA. It helps the body to make DNA, that is vitamin B. And there's also vitamin K, which plays a role in blood clotting and keeping the bones healthy. And there's also potassium, which keeps nerves and muscles functioning properly. And it is also vitamin C, an antioxidant that helps the skin, bones, and connective tissues, and also important for iron absorption. And it also contains vitamin A, which is key to bone growth, vision, reproduction, cell functions, and the immune system. So these are some of the advantages. 
those who eat asparagus, you can get all these things here. And I like it when they talk about um, the DNA. I'm not quite sure whether we are not born with the DNA or it makes the DNA stronger than it should be. And of course, the time is 22 minutes to 8. If you are just joining me now, this is Unpacking the Day. We look at the headlines within, beneath, beyond, without, behind, left, center, right. And we try as much as possible to make sense of the stories that you might come across today. And of course, I'm sharing with you the stuff that the e-villager carried throughout the weekend. Now, there's also a story of Rebecca Aufiku, who was employed by Delta Security Company in Okahanja. She says she was fired while attending a family funeral in the north. Now, according to Aufiku, she was on leave for a short holiday for a week and then traveled to the north. And she said, when I was in the north, one of my family members died. I couldn't report to work on, on the day that I was supposed to come. I told my supervisor what the issue was. But after returning from the funeral, she said that her supervisor had removed uh, her supervisor removed her work uniform from her room. So that was just that, and the job was gone just like that. Now, security companies, they are among the worst employers ever. And the worst thing that is happening with security com companies is kind of taking advantage of others. They take advantage of the, um, the most dis disadvantaged people. They pay them lowly. Uh, some of them, if you look at the informs that they wear, it's terrible. They are not, you know, protect protected. And there are even women who are deployed at places that could be dangerous for them without even a button stick. And most of them are not given air time to call in case of, a, of an emergency. And the worst is still, this is the rain season right now, and most security guards, they don't have a rain, rain, rain coats, nothing. They are just themselves. And there are also times when where they are supposed to go and, and uh, uh, guard, there's no shelter. Because the belief is that if there's shelter, they might doze off and then thieves will come and break in. So they will be wondering in this rain, imagine trying to find somewhere where they can get shelter just for them to not to get wet. Yet the working conditions are terrible, most terrible. And I will add that most security companies are now owned by our own people. And this is exactly where it makes it worse. So we treat our own people as if they are dogs, with no concern, with nothing. And there's one security company that is always in the news, either for delaying salaries or not for paying salaries at all, or for giving workers bits and pieces of their salaries, the salaries they would have worked on for quite some time. There is that security command. It's always in the news all the time. And yet you see the owner buying this latest car, showing this off and showing that off. You, how do you sleep at night? It's our people. We must start to feel for them. All right, so that's Rebecca. And she said um, that uh, the instructor and disciplinary hearing manager of Delta Security Company, Bernard Victor, said that Rebecca did not adhere to the rules and regulations of the company, and that the company called Rebecca to report to work on the agreed date. Now, according to the manager, Rebecca did not come to work on the date she was supposed to come. She came to inform me that they had a death in family, and she brought this to my attention at a later stage, which was the same day that she was supposed to come. Our, li our life, says Blacks, is very tight. It's very tight. It's very tight because uh, if, if uh, someone dies and you don't attend the funeral, you know what the elders will say. Yeah, he or she is working now and she doesn't care about what happens here. You will become the talk of the village. What was, she, was she there? Was he there? Yeah. Because now they are making money so they don't even come. We live tough lives, and our cultures make it very difficult sometimes for us. 
you have no choice, especially where a death is concerned. You have to be there. And yet your employer also wants you to be at work. How do you balance that? I think this is a case where we just need to meet halfway. And we agree as to whether, you know, we need to meet halfway, understanding each other based on humanity. A death, the way we view death, look, I always say when Pupkavitz died, his shops, they were operating. That couldn't have happened with a black man. If a black man dies today and your shop it doesn't close, the people will say, why? It's where his magic is. That's how he's making money because that's where the magic is. That's where the magic is. Why are the shops not closed? And we don't understand that that is business. Pupukav is his shops, they, even his business is expanded. He bought BMW and he then expanded to growth more. A black man's business wouldn't have done that. I'm not being, uh, I'm, this is not self-pity or self-hate, but I'm stating a fact. We believe so much in black magic. It is there, yes, but when it comes to business, imagine if Pupkavitz was black and his business is never closed when he was in the mortuary. That could have been the talk of the, you know, why didn't they close, right? So that's where his magic is. Yet there's no magic. A business and a person must be separated. I'll be taking a commercial break at, at quarter past eight, and I'll be back to continue with this. I've got a large chunk of stuff that I need to share with you. And of course, we are coming to you from the capital of Hintuk. This is Unpacking the Day on a Monday morning. For well, only the second time in the history of this great continent, the world will witness the skills which will transform Africa. From the 28th of March until the 2nd of April, the Dome in Sokopun will host various African nations who will compete to be the best in 16 different trade categories. World Skills Africa 2022 brings together young, skilled men and women from all over the continent to demonstrate their talent and skills in a wide area of occupational areas, aspiring to the prestigious title of African champion. Join the Namibia Training Authority and the Ministry of Higher Education, Technology and Innovation in partnership with the African Union and World Skills International as we present this landmark showpiece for technical and vocational skills in Africa. World Skills Africa, 28th of March until the 2nd of April at the Dome in Swakopmu in partnership with the European Union and the German government. All right, uh, welcome back. Uh, um, Abed Bishop Hishono was trending. Uh, that is after the High Court ruled that he was supposed to pay the First Lady Monica Gengos 250000 in defamation uh, reparations, if I may use that word. And of course, we carried that story last week when it broke in the villager and other papers. They have it to today, which is understandable because we work differently. But when our story was about um, Shono saying that uh, he needs to sell his teeth uh, so that he can uh, pay Monica back, that is the first lady. I don't know how much uh, how much worth his teeth are because that was also our interesting headline. And the, the story that we carried says Independent Patriots for Change member and teacher Abed Bishop Ishono says he doesn't know how he will pay the defamation claim ordered to him. Now, this comes on as on Friday, High Court Judge Oben Speer in the Vinduk High Court uh, ordered uh, Ishono to pay 250000 to the First Lady Monica Genkos. Now, Speer said uh, Ishono must pay the defamation, the defamation case with a 20% interest rate per annum from the day of judgment to the final payment. Now, when he was asked, he said, maybe I will sell my teeth. I don't know. I will see. That is what he said. And of course, he was trending because I understand that there, were, there was a WhatsApp group that was uh, created for, uh, by people who wanted to help him. Because some people who are good in numbers, they were also saying 250,000 times 100 people, how much do you get? Or 250,000, if one person is going to pay 2,500, he just need 100 people, then Ishono pays. But um, the son here says that the ruling 
on Bishop's sin sets good precedent and says that political and legal analysts yesterday agreed that Friday's High Court ruling against independent patriots for change regional coordinator Abed, Abednego Bishop Ishono did not set a precedent of limiting freedoms to speak about public matters involving people in authority. Now, they are not saying this did not set a precedent of limiting freedoms, but what it does is to keep people in check so that you don't go about bad-mouthing people even when you haven't cross-checked the facts. It's about the facts. And it's also about talking about things that may not concern you, and you are there out of context saying things. But most people thought that the ruling is limiting freedom of speech. But freedom of speech doesn't include uh, spreading falsehoods. Now, the, this is one of the things that is coming through, and that story is in the sun. And uh, the others, they have it on page 3. That is the new era. Have the, yes, the story on page 3 where they are saying Bishop reaches out for support as he is ordered to pay First Lady 250000 It says family and friends of Northern Best Teacher Abed Nigo Bishop Ishono, who was ordered by the High Court to pay 250000 to First Lady Monica Gengos for defamation, have indicated their willingness to help raise the funds. Now, he has also apologized because he went to uh, the First Lady's lawyer, Sisa Namanje, where he had to apologize and submit a written apology. But that written apology, it seems as if it won't change anything. And some people were actually arguing that it would have been better for the courts to just ask him to do community service instead of asking him to pay 250000 And you have that story also in the Namibian. It's on page 3. Now, today, we this is Valentine's Day today, and I saw there's a story in the Namibian as well about FNB warning people against um, swindlers. But we are carrying a very sad story about a man who swindles uh, distressed women, especially women who put on social media all their problems, and he targets them. Now, what he simply does is um, he's actually known as the auction king. So he goes to buy cars from the auction. When he buys cars from the auction, he then asks the women to pay for the cars with promises that they want to raise money for a future together. And most women, they've been taken because of that. And um, we, are, we, are, we are carrying that story in the e-villager today. Um, just like the Tinder swindler, the Netflix docu docu documentary that is trending today, and our guy is actually called the auction swindler because he uses the auction to swindle women. You can read that story if you haven't subscribed for free to be getting the e-villager. Once again, let me give you the number, 0812004144, 0812004144. Some people might not understand this. When you are in love, you don't think of uh, all these other things, especially when you come across a smooth talker. Here's, here's a guy who is enterprising. He will tell you, look, I've got an idea. We can buy these cars and we sell the cars and we make money. And then he will convince you and you end up paying. Now, the first part that we ran today is about one woman who actually says that she spent more than 600000 And most of the times, the guy will leave them with cars that are useless, stripped of parts or shares, cars that they cannot do anything to. And in the case of the first victim who, tell, who, who tells his uh, story, in our first uh, part today, uh, there were six cars that she had to pay for. Now, apart from paying for these six cars, she also had to do some e-wallets and then uh, pay to sell and, and anything else. Like Then she was keeping records, fortunately, and it's a lot of money. Uh, to make it worse, she was retrenched. The company closed down. And uh, now she's not working. She's the breadwinner. And she is saying, I don't know what to do. She has reached out to the mother. She has also reached out to the wife of the guy who is in Cape Town, South Africa, where the guy usually goes. There is no response. So our 
auction swindler is out there. And uh, right now he's dating a woman who works for one of the uh, biggest tourism companies in the country. And these women, there are two uh, women who have spoken to us and they've been reaching out to this woman, but she tells them she knows where she stands with her man. Well, this is what happens when you are in love. And you can get that story. It's an interesting story, but at the same time, it's so sad. And this is why social media right now, you don't pour your heart out there. You don't, and this, and even putting up your, the pictures of your kids and all these other things. And I, if you follow people, there are times when it's in the beginning of an affair, of an affair a couple is posting everything that they do the hotels that they visit, the food they eat, the clothes they buy, these so-called couples, uh, couples out outfits, they will be showing you. The moment you start seeing, the, the moment you start not seeing those things on social media, you know it's broken. There is nothing left. So please just live your life. And social media is social media. It breaks up families and relationships, relationship, relationships, use it for business or, uh, or other stuff. But don't live your life on social media because you die there. I'm not saying these women, they lived their lives there. But for some other reason, um, so someone who is uh, out there prowling the social media streets will always get to know. And it's interesting that the same guy was for the past two years, he has been chatting with another woman from the coast. For two years, they haven't met, just chatting, and they were about to meet. So that kind of patience is out of this world. Now, and of course, the story of the fisherman, Jonas Eita, who went missing. We covered this story as well uh, on radio and in the newspaper. And um, the other papers, they have got the story today. Like I said, we operate differently. But um, it's, um, diff it's um, uh, one story because what we are being told, it's uh, the father who actually says um, that um, he was uh, made to know and uh, the company called him on Monday. Now, uh, Thursday marked the fourth day after he went missing. That is... Um, uh, the fisherman after he went missing uh, and I'm talking here about Jonas Hater who was aged 35. So today that's uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, that's about eight days I guess. So I'm not quite sure whether there could still be hopes of finding him. That's the other story. But I had a question whether these, um, uh, you know, these incidences at sea are they because there is lack of um, uh, uh, um, what can I say protection or measures in place to make sure that this won't happen. I'd, I've never been out there, but I'm just asking here: How does it work exactly? Is it because uh, people just have to jump off, or what exactly happens there? Maybe those who go out. They may come through and then uh, share with us what exactly this is and why are these things happening quite often these days. And of course, um, last week we spoke about uh, Daphne Sek, that is the Chief Inspector uh, Christina Van Dunem, Daphne Sek, being sent to the north to go and deal with uncouth churches. Now, there is an interesting story here, and I also... Uh, um, uh, laughed when I read it about uh, the chief inspector now uh, fighting the evangelical Lutheran church in Namibia over the customary rights to a piece of land worth 6.8 million that is close to the Omafo township of Helao Nafidi in the Oangwena region. So she was sent there to go and deal with uncouth churches, but she also finds herself fighting the evangelical Lutheran church in Namibia over. Now, look then this fight becomes personal because then she has got an issue with a church of a land that is, uh, that, that is worth $6.8 million. Now, I'm not sure how the inspector general sees this because she's fighting a church. Now, she has been sent to go and deal with uncouth 
churches. So the fight becomes personal, don't you think? And this is when, if it, if it was in the court, someone would then have to call for a re recusal. That uh -uh, she is, in actual fact, an interested party. She has an issue with the church. So she shouldn't be one of those who are in the team where she must uh, bring or hold the churches to account. I'm just saying, I'm not saying anything here. I'm just saying, and of course, it's two minutes to eight. Now, when we talk about COVID, we are also carrying a story where the European Union says that uh, they are going to investigate reports of uh, Pfizer vaccine and Moderna vaccine causing menstruation uh, problems. And the, if you remember, I shared with you a story last week where they were actually saying that the COVID-19 vaccination has little impact on menstrual cycle. That was on January 7. But then the report that came through yesterday says there is concern and the European Union Medicines Agency Agency uh, co Committee is, a review, is a reviewing reports of heavy menstrual bleeding and absence of menstruation from women who had received COVID-19 vaccines from Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna. Now, the assessment was in view of reports of menstrual disorders after receiving either of the two vaccines, both based on messenger mRNA technology. The agent says it was not yet clear whether there was a causal link. Menstrual disorders can occur due to a range of underlying medical conditions and stress and tiredness. Now, the EMA, which is the European Medical Agency, said, adding that cases of such a disorders had also been reported following COVID-19 infection. So I will, shall be giving you more as we go on. But I will take a commercial break right now, 0832888401, 0832888401. You can come through after the commercial break. If we were not about you, we would not have done our best to offer you a rich portfolio of benefit options that will help you to enjoy the best healthcare at all times from dental to critical and beyond. But we are about you, so we did. nhp.com.na, we are about you. All right, 0832888401, 0832888401. You can come through. Now, I was talking about the... Pfizer and Moderna vaccines now with the European Union uh, come, coming in to say they are going to look at the reports to verify whether these reports are true or they are not true. Now, I checked out when we put out a poster last night where p people were quick to say, no, this was known from the beginning and they know what they are doing, but we need to understand one thing here. Um, our bodies react differently, and I know one of our colleague, colleagues here uh, has got that prob has got that problem. Um, bo bodies react diff different differently to vaccines, so we shouldn't rush to conclude to conclusion. Or what I would want to say is may maybe we just need to give time and then see. Once the in once the investigation is done then we will get the results to know exa exactly what the issue is. And the story that I shared with you regarding this last week, uh, they were actually saying that it's not clear yet, but there is little impact on the menstrual cycle uh, uh, in people who took Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Good morning. Uh, oh, my uh, voice. My <laughs> voice. My voice is too loud. Good morning. Good morning, Wanda. Yes, how are you? I'm very well. Yes. Mr. Wanda, mm. I just want to have a concern of uh, Swapo. Swapo, what happened? I think uh, we need to have a Oh, I lost him. Maybe it's uh, credit, but um, you can come back uh, 083 
0832284801 and this gives me a window for me where I can share more stories. Now, the e-villager also last week carried the story of uh, the UNAM campus at Rundu where students were complaining that for them to uh, register for hostel accommodation, they were being asked to provide or to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Now, the university has come back to say uh, they Actually, they are actually saying that they resolved the matter and indicated that mandatory vaccinations against COVID-19 is not among its prerequisite for admission. And we carried this story last week, but the response is actually here right now where they are saying that um, the, uni the university has, however, resolved the matter and indicated that mandatory vaccination against COVID-19 is not among its prerequisite for admission. That is what spokesperson John Aufiku said. Now, last week, a number of students were turned away when they attempted to register for accommodation at UNAM's hostels because they were not in possession of vaccination cards. Now, all this emanated from a notice UNAM issued in January. Let me see who is on the line. Good morning. Uh, hello, good morning. Yes, yeah. I you seem to be distant. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, you seem to be distant still. I can hear you, but I'm not sure if the others can. Oh. Yes. Okay, uh, should I proceed? Yeah, sure. All right, uh, the, if it, mine are just a uh, question, actually, two questions. Uh, on the show notes. Yeah. Uh, my first question would be. Um, I don't know how it appeared to everyone else. Mm -hmm. It does seem to me that this particular case was given um, much more effort than it was. Um, it was resolved too fast compared to the problems and all the other issues that we have with the backlogs and the and whatnot. And this is not even the first information case. Yeah, but it was unlike uh, within a matter of. Um, weeks, if not days, it was concluded. So if anyone has maybe a comment or an answer of why this particular case was done so fast, mm. said so fast, I'd, I'd really like to hear what other people think. Okay. And then the other one is with regards to, if I remember well, sometime last year, this particular person, his name is Ishono, mm -hmm. had resigned uh, from the party or something like that uh, after this case or information which is just what he posted came out. So I don't know why he is still being referred to as, as an IPC leader or something like that. Maybe you, yeah. you, maybe you have more information that I don't have. Okay, all right. Okay. I'm going to be listening to the program. Thank you so much. Company. All right, thank you so much. Yep. All right. All right. Um, let me, because I also remember the issue where Shono uh, said that he was stepping down in view of what was happening. But look, for this to have some leverage, right? You need to link someone to something. And in this case, IPC becomes the leverage where the story has to be built. So if it was just a teacher in the North without including IPC, it wouldn't make much sense because him too, he said it's political. So then one would ask, how is it political? And you drop in. IP, IPC. Without IPC, people just say, who is he? But because there is IPC, then it becomes bigger than it should have been. Good morning. Yes, Hello. Wanda, how yes, are good you? Good morning, Don. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Uh, Wanda. Don, why do you always...
No, you see, sometimes I, I used to listen to you and the, the, the callers and so on. You see? Yeah. 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 Okay. I wonder, like this, uh, he shows he show our bishop. Mm. Uh, Namibian people, sometimes we are not serious. Mm. We have social issues, social problems. You might see in the newspaper there is no water in a village and so on. But you will never see people creating a WhatsApp group. Saying that let us collect the money and go and help those people. I never seen that. But seriously, someone who, how can I, intentionally, what can I call it now? You see? Mm. Okay, you, you have spread the rumors and so on, found guilty by the court of law. Yeah. You want to help him settle 250,000. But you cannot help a neighbor. Naturally, who is suffering? You see? But you have money seriously. Where are we heading to? You see now? Where are we heading to? It is true now, I understand when you say it is politically motivated. And this contribution now, it let us say maybe it's political contribution. Because seriously, a person with sober mind, mm. a citizen with sober mind, society with sober mind, cannot go to that extent. We are reporting daily, we see daily, people are suffering. There is no water, there is no food. Kids don't have school uniform. In one area, in that certain area, some areas. Why can't we get those sort of groups to sell we are 250 let us contribute each and everyone just for us you see to contribute why it is not done you see but sometimes seriously yeah no i'm just asking yeah i know don't, why but yeah. don't you yeah. also think that people use their money where they want they want and when I don't, I know that. Mm. It's just a question of you, mate. Do you understand? No, you say I know that, that, okay? Yeah. Yeah, one, if you have money, seriously, mm -hmm. you must know. Okay, you can be a billionaire or whatever. And you know, that's why I'm saying Africa or Namibian multimillionaire. You mm. see? Mm. They know how to waste money. You see? He will drive past a person who is suffering there and go and spend money on unnecessary things. You see? We have some cases here. We don't want just to mention them. If that money was utilized yeah. or used, yeah. you see, for a real purpose, we're supposed not to be where we are. Not 100%, at least 20%. It would have helped people who are in need. Mm. But if you want to spend it flying, first class, you see, going to expense. We know it's your money or whatever, but please, let us respect human life. If we can help where we can, not to waste money just like that. Yeah, but don't if you go to your brother now and say, can I have money, I have a business idea, they may not give you the money, but when you die, they will buy a coffin for you. Do you, you know, do you not know that? That is an African tendency, do you understand? That is why we must clean that one out of our mind, you see? Because you cannot respect the dead. Not only me, even the government. Not only me, <laughs> even the government. Do you mm -hmm. understand? More veterans are just there, suffering, flat. But when they die, the funeral, the cost, yeah. it will be close to one million. Mm -hmm. It's not only me, the government, even the Christianity now, as we speak, those who call themselves Christians, they are doing it. They will not help, but once they see that you are normal, it's when the pastor will jump, pray, and so the congregation will now start putting money to buy you in a coffin if you don't have. Mm. But they don't, it's not as we knew them before, going house to house or helping the poor. It is not working at yeah. all. Yeah. But all right. we know where to, how to waste money. You will see a pastor 
flying left, right, but leaving where he is staying in that, uh, how can I settlement or village? People are dying. People are suffering. You see, me, you, the church leaders, politicians, whatever we call them, mm. we are just, all of us, our minds are just blo it's a, a blockage. Yeah. We must just maybe unblock it. And right. think what we should use the money for. Thank, Thank you. you, Don. Thank you so much. All right, I know that uh, he showed no of course, uh, he resigned after he apologized. It's not the first time that he's, he's apologizing profusely. Because in February, he also apologized and um, he then resigned from all posts in the IPC. But like I said, uh, without um, using IPC as an appendage to who he shown is, uh, other, otherwise this won't make much sense because um, uh, the last, the first listener or the second listener act actually said there are so many cases where people have been slandered or defamed on social media but until today they haven't been resolved and this one here it seems it has been fast tracked. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning. How are you? I'm good. Sir. How are you? Good. Yeah. Mm. Okay, on the issue of rent. Rent uh, between the, the infighting, yes, it's not really between the chief inspector. What the kind? Do name the Fonsec. Yeah, the Fonsec, yeah. Mm. But I knew, I knew Fonsec when she was Fonsec and before she became the Fonsec. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to make sense out of it here. Mm -hmm. so, I think the main reason here, I'm saying, what's really happening with the church of nowadays? Look, this Russian church is claiming that it was given uh, that land since uh, 19 something. Yeah. And uh, I understand during that time, it mm -hmm. was, uh, it was, it was uh, granted under the, the Okwanyama Transition Authority. And before this, 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 this uh, place became a town. So because they only came to become a town in 2006. Okay, what do they mean doing all So it means that since they were given that land in 1950 something, they had not done anything, then it went back to the traditional authority. Mm. When it went back to the traditional authority, one of the father who was now come and took it, and he was, he was given it. In 1989, yeah. so meaning that all those years it, it, it belonged to, 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 to the great Joao. And uh, since the town was uh, was proclaimed in 2006, by that time, from 2006 to 2010, when the came and took the rent, and inherited the rent, it means it was the title of deeds was in the hands. Of that he forsaken that of the, 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 the father now because he when the time was broken, they they rent them to him, not to the church. I don't understand what the, why now this the church are fighting or involved in this kind of infighting because this thing is now common in not especially in northern towns. It's not this is not the first time it's happening. It happened. To Nipa, it happened way, way when Urukonda was fighting games on business and so forth and so forth. So for. They are fighting, but it's because now the value of the land, since it's in the, in the, in the, in the border of the town now, the value of the land is now higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's now worth with losing millions, but then it was not putting in anything, uh, it was only think 600. Not even uh, or one thousand, but now since it's a town, it's losing millions, and they want what, what I'm saying is that now they want to acquire that land so that they they get it. They will even sell it to the highest vendor so that they can get those millions. They have now money, money, money. Those 
they are no longer the way they, we, we expect them to be, the moral authority or to guide us and so forth. They are just mm -hmm. fighting because they want to, to, to make money out of it. They, okay. they don't need it unless they, they've dropped even to the parish already or so forth that can help the, the Christian of this county. Thank you. All right. So, yes. Thank yes, you so much. Saying, so, All right then. Okay, there we are. Let me take a commercial break. I'll be right back. There's no such thing as destiny or fate. There's only potential and what you choose to do with it. We chose to show up. We chose to put in the work. We chose to unlimit our potential. And tomorrow, we will continue to show up. To put in the work because limiting our potential is not an option. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Wanda. How are you? Andrew? Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. No, I'm mm. fine. How are you? No, good. Good to hear. But, um, but what are the, 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 uh, the, from, from Seta, the from Seta, yeah. you have a tall order to deal with this uh, church issue in this country. Because uh, when you look at the mushrooming of this, uh, I don't know whether to call them charismatic churches or whatever they are called. Mm. Other new churches that are so mushrooming in the villages, in towns, and so on. The other day I was uh, walking around in, in the street looking for, for my kettle, and I just heard a voice somewhere, you know, somebody preaching, you know, it's, it's bushy. Mm. And I wonder what was happening. Just mm. to find out uh, about two, three people and somebody standing in front, like, uh, standing to be that's, a pastor. That's, a, that's how they the build up, Andrew. <laughs> they start small. They start small. Now, the, the interesting thing is mm. that the police now is going to to, to have a to put to have a fight with with, with, with politicians because the other day mm. over the news I saw some prominent politicians being board members of a church in Kawango West, of which church a prophet was implicated in some funny stuff. Pre pregnancies, yeah. Pregnancy, you know, <laughs> and uh, one of the one. Is a prominent politician, a leading politician of opposition party. The other one is, is uh, somebody I knew back in the day in the mining industry, who is now apparently a, a personal assistant to the governor of. Uh, but, but, but Andrew, you seem to be afraid of mentioning names. It's a fact that it's uh, APP, the APP <laughs> Secretary mean, General. Yes, it's, it's a fact and it's known. It's not like yeah, gossip yeah. or rumor, it's known. Okay, mm. but what I saw is I only saw the face on TV and so on, and I did not read okay. where it came <laughs> All right, so I see. So I'm afraid of being sued. <laughs> you don't have teeth. You don't have teeth to sell. <laughs> I don't have, I have. I don't have teeth to sell. I don't know whether this was golden teeth or just ordinary teeth. But then apparently it's an idiom that that you wanted to say that I have nothing I have from sale. I'll, I'll sell my, my teeth. teeth yeah. Now, yeah. On a serious note, so. Mm. Again, uh, when the, the LPM came to, to the north the other day on yeah. the campaign trail, or recruiting trail, I, I saw them also attending one of these churches somewhere at Okalevona, somewhere near the, the bastion of the Lutheran church at Olmipa. Uh, so uh, when I look at these things and I now see that the politicians have found fertile ground in, in, in this, these churches that they realize that the people are going to these churches, yeah. and I think the politicians they now realize that this is the way they can garner votes, maybe. Uh -huh. So it's going to be a double fight now. For no, the but, but Andrew, do you think that the police have got a leg to stand on here when 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 we look at the law? Do they have a leg to stand on? Because the people are going to these churches willingly, right? And yeah. uh, no one is holding guns and driving them there. So can you honestly say 
don't go to these churches and all these other things unless people go to the police and uh, lodge cases like uh, they stole my money or they raped me. Do do they really have any leg to stand on here legally? They, they probably don't have, and, and that is my problem because mm. my 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 concern is, is the, the issue of moral fiber of our society. Yeah, and the the the, 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 the history we come from and the belief we have in, in, in the religion and church mm. and so on. Uh, it seems to seems like things seems to be changing uh, from your from our belief in the so-called traditional churches. Mm-hmm. and the culture that we come from, to these new charismatic churches and the way they deal with things and the societal issues that we have. So this whole trajectory needs uh, attention so as to see where to from here. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, now, when you, when you couple now these things with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, conflicts of interest, for example, if you now... Here, that the Francesca also has a problem with a uh, personal problem with, with a certain church containing mm. material things or plot and stuff like that. It then comes back to the issue of conflict of interest in some of these things because we, 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 we are all uh, societal issues that yeah. one or the other person would be confiscated in one of these things. Okay. All right, Andrew, thank you that. so much. All right, well, what, what I see here. All these things, if the police move in, uh, this will just cement the belief that these are the end of times and the Christian will face persecution. And the, the verses will be like the verses are coming to lie. This is what the Bible says, that in the last days we will be persecuted. And this will be seen as persecution. And people will not see this as um, criminal because there are people within the churches now who are criminals. And the word that will go out there is, it was prophesied that we will be persecuted in the end of times. And it will cement faith and belief that it's happening now, so we must prepare. So I'm not quite sure how this is going to work. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. How are you? Yeah, good, good morning. Yes. Good morning, good morning. Mm. Uh, uh, I think uh, that, uh, you know, life is a uh, mistake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever people do, nothing new, it's a repetition of things. What was, and has the, been, and will be? Uh, the fighting of churches and the fighting between belief and whatsoever. Mm. Then all the stories and the, I think it, it will never get away. And it never brought uh, to, to control. It has been tried a long time ago. It's the reason why even these guys when they arrested the city because it brings confusion. That's what they believe. It's not doing what uh, other people uh, who have been there first, they believe it's the right. Yeah. Always when uh, things emerge, and even if you look at the grammatical advice when he was advising when they tried to arrest the disciples, mm. saying because these guys they, they were doing something new, and he gave him the uh, reference that you no know, guys, uh, we may fight in our best fighting God. Yeah. If this if this thing is for a human. Disappear, but if it is of God, even if you try to to regulate, and that is the advice. The, the only thing I want to advise you is like Andrew, you try to connect the social politics, just not in soft music. People are in quality mm. by, by virtue, whether you are a politician or you are what, and, and you have a choice to go wherever you go. Mm. And churches have nothing to do with the politics. I think when we are trying to to deal with the issues, let, let us forget of politics or with votes. It, it's like people now they are afraid of the, maybe a certain party B or A is going to lose vote because we have these churches and so forth. I, I, I think it's a wrong analysis. 
Okay. Uh, let us face maybe uh, if there is crime, let us face the people, individuals, not even close to the church. Because the other time, you remember, we have the cases of the people in the, in the, in the prison today, the Minister of Justice, the Minister of Judiciary, did they close those ministries? No. They just went on and take out the carpet mm. and they even appoint new people there. They let the ministry go on. So the same thing. There, there is an individual we are we are believing and we are accepting. There is an individual in this church. Mm. And not only in this specific, even in everything, there is a pastor who is in prison because of uh, <laughs> the crime of what the other church has done. So these things do not a thing of change. It's an individual and the spirit that is moving and taking over humanity. Mm. I think we might, when we are dealing with these things, we must forget church names or uh, church names or which one is that. Let us just face it. Yeah, but, and we but, but what do you think should be done here? Because there is no crime that has been committed. People are willingly attending churches no one has gone to the police to complain. Um, do we, like I was asking here, do you think that the police have got a legal leg to stand on? Do there's, they? There's no, there's no, no leg. There's no ground. There's no ground because, number one, they have to go and change the rest of the Constitution. I have my right to worship wherever I go. Just like the people, they have the right to go and drink. President make an announcement now. Hmm. Men, you are just at the bar. <clears throat> Is it a problem of men going to bar? I, I think let us go out. Let us find out. Because I, I, I remember there was a topic previously to say two places are trying to play a role in the life of people that is a bar and in the church. People, they are trying to look for comfort. They are trying to look for harmony. They are, they are trying to look for hope. Mm. And they find these two places are trying to give up to the people. And instead of shaming the people and the trying to criminalize the things, go out and find out what is this that is, 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 is making people to flock here. They are saying where the bed are flocking, there must be something to eat. Yeah. So, so let, let us, let us uh, be realistic and we agree there is a problem in the land. Mm. There is a situation. People, they are going through something and they are looking for help. They are looking for hope and they are trying to go wherever it is. And let, let us just try to, to, to reach out, mm. not to fight one another or fight somebody that is trying to, to, to reach out to somebody. No, there is no war like that. Mm. No. And I'm telling you, no matter what the police shaker or the police are trying to do, there's a lot of criminals that are there, you know, clearly, 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 that are doing criminal and they're using them. Uh, and, and, and targeting church or individual, you, you, you don't have a mirror even. What weight, what scale are they going to use to determine, yes, this church must be closed, this church must, this is the right one, this is the wrong one. What scale are you having? Mm. Are you not going to find yourself fighting and even closing the, the, the right thing? Jesus, he advised the, the, the people because he gave them a, a, a parable of the tail, the weed among the good weed. Mm. And they wanted to pull them out and to go out and they say, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Let you them grow them, together. Yeah. Yeah. Let them grow together until the end. When they start out at the end, mm. that is the proper time for uh, this belief. And, and so that we don't harm even the right one. Okay. So I think and this is uh, stay the same, my, my brother. Mm. So we must not just be hatred and put a seed of hatred to one another. We are all one, and all these people they are trying to do it, it's a well-being of a human being. Mm. And wherever maybe somebody is not fine, uh, maybe you went out. We just need to sit down and see what is it that needs to be done and correct in the country. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. All right, um, physical health. There's physical health, there's mental health, and there's a spiritual health. The spirit also wants to be nourished and nurtured. Now, before I take the next call, uh, Bishop um, Disho, Joseph Disho, who is uh, in self-imposed exile in Germany, 
says that the people in Kavango are suffering from self-doubt, self-pity, and self-hate because they only get confidence when given tasks by outsiders. Now, Disho also says um, in his own words, Kavango people suffer a deep psychosis of inferiority complex in relation to authority and people from outside. This complex manifests itself in self-doubt, self-pity, and self-hate. As a result, officials on the Rundu Town Council lack confidence to execute the tasks and responsibilities given to them. They wait for someone from Fintuk to tell them what to do. They are too afraid to take risks because they cannot read the mind of the master, whom they fear even in their sleep. They are also afraid that Swapo will be unhappy with them if they build facilities that might benefit those who are seen to be against Swapo. That is what uh, <laughs> Professor Joseph Disho says. Uh, good morning. Good morning, my brother. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing so well. How are you doing wherever you are right now? I'm doing fantastic, and uh, thanks to the Almighty to give us a life and to see the new day. Thank you so uh, much, yes. Yeah, mm. good morning to the listeners, uh, my dear sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my dear uh, comrade, I'm listening to most of the callers, mm -hmm. and the center is, was very, very wonderful. Thank you for the good messages every day. Mm -hmm. uh, in the evening time, we're always listening. But uh, the reason why I call two issues, I call. Yeah. Uh, first one, we're talking about uh, politics and the other side of uh, Kavango mm -hmm. and the other group, yeah. where uh, people are criticizing from foreign people or inside people about the life of the Kavango people. Yeah. Uh, you see, one thing we say is that a home which is destroyed, not only destroyed from outside, but it's also destroyed from the inside. What, what it means is collective system. You have Kavango region is not small, not big, but very, very developed in terms of uh, natural things which is there. And the same thing what is happening in commerce region, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. You see, commerce region, everybody wants to sit in the city, capital city. But if commerce region one day, you remove all the rich people in this, in this uh, country, capital city, mm -hmm. you remove all the rich people, you take them very far away from maybe Swakopmund or Ravis Bay, now, commerce itself will become the same as Kavango region, as the way it is. Why? It's because of our mindset. We were being manipulative system in us. Among you, we say Kavango is poor. But let me be clear here, there is no region in any way whether in Namibia or in anywhere people find themselves in the country, there is no region that is poor. Mm -hmm. Okay? In the sense of understanding, economic, when you say resources, human resources, there is no, unfortunately, one region that is poor. Because the reason is, it was blessed. The land are blessed with the natural resources, agricultural, water, forest, in landscape, and populative. What is the lack of everything? Is coming together and say, let's work together as one team. I, I am a Swapo party, okay, generally. Swapo party has to work with DTA. Is it DTA ready to work with uh, President Agegop? It's a, it's a noodle. By, by the way, it's PDM now. It's yeah, PD, uh, PDM. PDM now, sorry. PDM, yeah, PDM. PDM. Yes, yeah. Uh, popular dem uh, for what? democratic movement, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so all these things, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a sector need to move because they say one person cannot move the whole team. Mm -hmm. It needs support. We go for election, Election is finished. 
People from Kavango vote for Swapu Party. What, why did they vote for Swapu Party? Because one side, maybe Swapu Party has done something that they like that the others did not do. Might be the other side, Swapu Party lose that side, but other people win there, but they never do something which maybe they also do something which makes it Make Swapu Party lose there because why? Whatever you do is what you gonna get end of the day. The payment, the effort you put, mm -hmm. the trust you put, the honesty you put, and the patience you 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 put there. In end of the day, that gift will come inside, no matter how it takes. All right. It will take, it will come in. So what I'm trying to put inside there between the all people here mm -hmm. is. It has to be, first of all, honest to ourselves, mm -hmm. patient, mm -hmm. and hard work. And then let us, let us give a very important uh, um, uh, uh, advice to each one that will help to develop, not to be divided. Because when we divide, we are all falling mm -hmm. in that hole of poverty. We are all falling in that hole of distractions. Yeah. We are all falling the 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 the, the hole of not to call me. If I see you, Kavango, I see myself as Caprivi. We are one brother, one people. Okay. One Africa, one nation. Thank you so, so much. Yep. Have, yeah, let us have mm. that one so that we can build our country mm. in the future. Namibia becoming a very wonderful development country and peaceful and making food for others to eat, not for others to be disordered. Great because stuff. we're all one. Thank yes, you so I much. Understand. Thank you so much for yeah. that. Okay. Right. Of course. That is. Thank right. you very much. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, to sum, sum it up, be honest, work hard, and be committed. Simple. Uh, he said it, though, in a longer way, but that's uh, basically what it is. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Good. Gabriel. Yes, my brother. Are you in a law on a feed? Ah, no, I'm still in a window. <laughs> so you haven't developed your land in a law on a feed, right? Uh, not yet. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah, still uh, hanging out there. <laughs> All right. Co 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 COVID becomes everything. That is our reason. Yeah? <laughs> COVID. Yeah, but everything was going down already a long time. Isn't it? <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, Gabriel, okay. speak. Uh, okay, mm. wonder for the topic of today about the church. The church. And the police, uh, you say one done, eh? Mm. Uh, this is the thing we sometimes are failing to understand when it comes to our own people, especially the government. People who are uh, in a high position or position. They say, no, we can separate them. We must not think about the position, but they are the one. I'm sure even those things are happening. You remember that, you know, there was order given that you no, know, there's no particular uh, church to get involved in what petition, especially when we come to campaign. But remember one thing: when uh, Namibia to get independence, they used to use church. I remember one thing that they even Nelson, there was a newspaper called what? I forget the name, but I'm sure even in France, you know, we can come in. Uh, there was a newspaper uh, which used to be published, and there was all about the Namibian uh, independence, then it's from the church. But I don't know now how the government tend to not want even church to practice what they are doing. No, so but, but not, Gabriel, mm, I, I think the whole yeah. issue is uh, there are so many pastors who are misbehaving. And, um, yeah, but Wanda, yeah. remember one thing that when you are talking about democracy, mm. Where your right end is where my right starts. You see, once our people themselves, they're yeah. the one who have to control themselves. Where do you to go? If, unless if there's something happening like a guy in Kavango, Kavango or a police, I'm not mistaken, the one who mm. went into two, two men. Yeah, yeah two cousins. That's something else. But if you are telling me then I'm going to uh, Church of Wanda, where I know that Wanda can bring the miracle to me, I can get a job, I can do whatever, that is, I don't see anything wrong with it, because it's my right to go to Wanda. 
why they are going to the north? Why they didn't start even there? We have a church where the Baptist people here in, in window. Everybody know that. But why they didn't start with this those those church mm. in window? If you go to you know, no no where you going? We go to Omaram or Mwanda. Here the church is somewhere in the cemetery there, and everybody know. And those people wherever they go to those church overnight. What do you want to tell us now? So there's other people. Or you want to step on the tattoo, but the other one, they, you leave them free. What, what kind of... No, that's what I'm, I'm not maybe, understanding. Maybe, what I'm, maybe they, will, they will come back. They will come back. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's, it's better to start... What, what did you say? You start somewhere... Uh, you know where everything is happening, like in window here. Start from window here, and then you take it to other region. Mm. I think it will make sense. Okay. Uh, Wanda, that is what, not my comment, man. Uh, Thank you so much for coming minute. through, Gabriel. Just one minute, one, uh, one minute, I want to touch something uh, yeah. like uh, the investigation. Can, can, you, can, you, can you come back later? We need to give oh, and then it's all right. Okay. Oh. Thank you so much. All right, it's 229 uh, 083 Good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, morning. Good morning. Okay. Yes, good morning. How are you? Uh, fine, fine. One minute about church. One minute about uh, Namibia and Ukraine. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Mm. About change, eh? there's mm -hmm. no in Namibia. Christianity is all corrupt from from since after independence. Because what I'm why I'm saying that. Yeah. The people who are funding church, the people who are give, who are giving big money in church, they are the owner of casinos. They are they are the owner of nightclubs. That's when I I'm sure of what I'm saying. They give donation to church. Which give which gives you indication of that if something is the fundamental is from evil, then the whole system is evil carry. And it will just grow evil, evil. The pastor will be evil, they will pregnant people, they it's like it's a corrupt thing. There's no wholeness in Christianity. Even so, if the if the police office is arresting those who are for today, mm. he's only arresting them but the big Fish is those pastors who've been seen as clean because when they get money from the donors, that is in the uh, um, Angela Church, SB receives 100,000 from one businessman, 200,000 from other business. But if you ask those businessmen, what are their business? Others, they are casinos, they have gambling machines, they have this basic food. This is things that are all equal. They shouldn't associate with Christianity in reality. They're supposed not to. But, but money is money. Don't you think that money has got nothing to do with whether it's from a casino or a shabin? It's money. Oh, that's why in Christianity there's no haram and halal. To be them and uh, um, like you say, allow it, uh, what? Something like forbidden. If we say a pastor is not, it's forbidden for him to sleep with all the people in the church. Mm. It's forbidden. It's haram. They don't have haram and haram. As well, in, in, in religious things, people, they got haram, I mean, uh, what's in English now? Haram and halal. Yeah, but, it, but, it, but I'm, I'm asking, what does that have got to do with money? Whether it's from a brother or... When you make money, mm -hmm. and in religiously, there are money is allowed in, in church. Money is just money. What it is what you do. Mostly mm -hmm. what you make. Yeah, that's what now brings problem in Christianity. That they don't differentiate money. Mm -hmm. Uh, your your, ne your next uh, your next point was about what exactly? I heard Namib that they are saying uh, they are ready to go take uh, Namibian students who are studying in uh, in, in Ukraine mm. when they was that is, uh, what statement is that now? Oh, if in they Ukraine, that, in Ukraine, yeah. Ukraine. Yeah, they say come up, they are ready to go remove Namibians when the war is started. When there is no there is no fly zone made that when they will fly them, I don't know what they are, they are talking about. Because if you see all these superpowers, their embassy is out of Ukraine already. Hmm. It's time for people to go out of Ukraine. If you are just starting there, 
we end up crying for our ignorance. All right. Okay. Thank you so That's much. Great. Thank you, sir. All right, it's uh, 16 minutes to 9 0 8 You can also come through and uh, make your contribution. I spoke about Dundee. They are saying that um, they plan to retrench 800 people uh, as part of their streamlining. They want to streamline their operations, and Dundee is in Tsumebu. And it's one of uh, Tsumebu's mainstay, Tsumebu's economy mainstay. So eight, 800 jobs will be gone, and uh, they haven't said exactly when. But um, Tsumebu might then change how it looks like, because one, this is one of the biggest employers in that town. So it's a thing that this this going to happen. Good morning. One of the Hello, good morning. Yes. Good morning, Wanda. Yes, how are you? Very well, how are you? No, good. I can't complain. Your, your caller, Kate Adeo. Hmm. That one is a well disorganized caller, I must uh, Unfortunately, yeah, I have to say it. Uh, why, how, are, how why, you uh, why are you focusing on him and not uh, on making your contribution? Okay. Uh, you, I, are, I have <laughs> you are looking uh, for a fight. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's too early, man. It's too early yeah, in the week, yeah. it's too early in the morning as well. And it's okay. too early in the year. Oh, we are still in January. February, today is uh, 14th. Yeah. Financially wise, we are still in January. Yeah. So, uh, my point is, why should somebody mix uh, police operations with po politics? Mm. There's no, you don't, when a, a police is undertaking their operations, and then you are saying it's, it's politicians. And in fact, police does not just stand up and say, let's go to churches. It's us, the uh, members of the, the community, that goes to approach the, the, the officers that know at this particular church, mm -hmm. the, the, I mean, people are being what, what, what. All those barbaric things that are happening today. Yeah. It's us who are reporting. And now when the police is... is They're uh, acting, yeah. Acting, then we are opening our mouth. Fonseca, a chief inspector, started with the, with those issues here in Vindu. Mm, mm. He used to visit a lot of, 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 of these new churches here. Even now traditional he healers, she was, she was in their case. Say? I'm talking about traditional healers as well. Exactly. Mm. Now the, the brother is saying, is why, why are they starting in the north? It started here in Vindu. People mm. must, uh, must learn to follow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. He seemed, uh, he seemed to be uh, on uh, uh, Gabriel's case today. Gabriel must know that we have separation of power. Mm. Where you have a legislature, maybe where the politicians fall. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, the judiciary where... I believe the, the police <laughs> also. Yeah. You must not mix, mix up things. Yeah, but let me ask you this. Do you think that okay. uh, this uh, oper oper operation will succeed? It, it depends. Mm -hmm. I think that, it, yeah, no doubt. If, if they have succeeded in Lindo, why not in the north? Mm -hmm. unless, unless there's no truth on, on what they were told. Okay. And, and we must also ask ourselves, why is the police not targeting these uh, these churches like uh, Anglican, Elsin, traditional ones? Yeah. Those, mm. Yes, those traditional ones. It means there's, there are a lot of things that are happening there. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, 12 minutes to 9, 0832-888-401, You can also come through and uh, have a bite of the sherry. Uh, still in Kavango, the Swapo Party Youth League, uh, Kavango East region, they are saying that there's a tender cartel that is scooping all the tenders in that region. Sounds, doesn't sound new either. Uh, and again, it depends on how they are defining a cartel. Good morning. Good morning, Wanda. Yes, good morning. How are you? Uh, all right, how are you? Yes. Uh, I think I'll just jump straight to the point with my contribution. Mm. Um, <clears throat> my points are two. 
The one uh, is more on the state. Mm -hmm. uh, the state, being a secular state, cannot mm -hmm. impose onto people what they ought, ought not to worship. So when we send police officers up north yeah. to where police people, which churches they should go to, we are going beyond our, our boundaries. Um, so I, I think the police should really still relook at that because they, they have no they have no legal backing to say we're coming into your church mm. to see whether you're really worshiping God. Because if you stand in a court of law, how are you going to prove that this person <laughs> is worshiping God A or God B? Yeah. Or the God that you have recognized. So there's so I, no I so there's no measure. There's no measure. All right. Um and then the second would be on the Christian. Mm. I'm a Christian myself. Yeah. And I think uh, as Christians, we struggle to deal with reality. Mm. Um, you find that as Christians, we, we often nitpick mm -hmm. what we want to believe. Yeah. Uh, the Bible prophesies that there will be many false prophets in the, in, in, in the last days. Yeah. So when false prophets start pop popping up, why are you saying, no, we should shut these people down? Are you wanting to delay the, the return of Christ or what what exactly do you want to believe in? Mm. Even when we, you know, we, we fight against certain uh, groups of people, you know, that want certain rights. Mm -hmm. the, the Bible is clear on what will happen in the last days. Yeah. So unless we want to say we are not in the last days and we're not expecting the last days to come so that Christ can return. But how do you tell? Christians... How do we tell? We, we read our Bibles and we read the Psalms. Mm. And I think that that is where the problem starts. A lot of Christians do not read their Bibles. We, we want to go and stand in front of somebody or sit in front of somebody mm -hmm. that will stand and tell us, no, this is what is supposed to happen. And then we soak that all in. Mm -hmm. And we, we end up being duped into you know, thinking things that are not supposed to be drunk, being sprayed with doom. It, it happens because... Like like the the good book says, you know, my people are perish because of the lack of knowledge. Yeah. The lack of knowledge of God and God's word. Mm. So I, I honestly feel like Christians, it's high time we start deciding what we want to believe. So who if should? To, so who in this case should uh, act against um, these uh, churches where pe people now are losing faith? Is it the churches themselves, or should the police be part of this fight? Um, the police cannot be part of that fight. Mm. Um, Jesus said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. Mm. Um, if, we, if we allow Caesar's government to then run what is God's, mm. then we do not understand that God is in control despite of when we think he's not in control. All right. The Christians who understand that spirituality mm. is above the physical should be the ones who sit in their, in, in their private places, places to pray to God and also go out to preach to the people what the book really says. Instead of sitting around and saying, yeah, no, um, all these uh, false prophets, uh, they, they must go back. I mean, the Bible tells you there will be uh, countless false prophets in the last days. Mm. So find a way to preach the truth that God has entrusted to preach. So are we, quite, are we quite certain that uh, this could be happening because these are the end of times? As a Christian, yes, I would say I am quite certain. All right. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. All right. There we are. All right. Uh, sentiments coming through 083 to 88401, 083 to Because the way I look at it, it will be uh, understood differently. This uh, might be seen as persecution. You remember Saul uh, before he became Paul uh, on the way to Damascus uh, when he met. Uh, the Lord on the way, according to the Bible. And then he was asked, why do you persecute me? So persecution started a long time ago, and uh, it's not so clear whether whatever is going to happen now might be described as persecution. But there are a lot of bad things that are happening within churches. And you remember at New Year, the crossover, those women who were being bathed in front of everyone else and in front of the cameras even undressing and pastors, you know, scrub, scribing your, bo your body, your boobs and everything so that you become clean and you start your new year on a clean slate. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. How are you? Good morning. No, good. Fine, man. How are you doing? 
Uh, no, I'm doing well. I'm yeah, doing well, yes. That's good to uh, me. No, no, uh, let me, let me, let me touch on this thing of the police, uh, one who arrest teachers. Yeah. That one, eh? First of all, the police, this police, they are also in those teachers. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what rank are they holding. They are there also. So I do not see any ground that they can take it. It is politic or what is it? Mm. There's no, there no ground there. And you should not forget that you are there to, to make sure that the people or human beings are following the laws. Mm -hmm. And the people in the church, they are just doing... Not to, to harm to no one. You see, they're just praying. Whether they're wrong or right, mm. it is a faith. Yeah. We. Wh what are you saying? Are you saying that those church are the are, are the wrong one from the religious one? I don't see it any way they want to, to take this thing to. And also, they must just remember that also by doing that, just as we were talking, Iwanda, mm. by doing that, it's just like this thing of of of, of COVID nineteen. You see. When these people they start to enforce their their regulation, thinking that they will win now, achieving what they want, yeah. they are just amending our faith. You know, the faith of the believers. Mm. We will not give into this thing, even if they are those people doing that. The church will stop. The church will never stop. You see, they must find a way to change the system that allows people to open church. That is where they must go. How did the church open? Who allows all this? What, what allows all these churches to open? Freely like that. Mm, mm. Uncontrolled. It is where they must look. They must stop harassing people in the churches. And they must go to their laws and regulations there and see where, how are they letting water in the room? Mm, mm. Is it not so wonder? Because yeah. I don't see any 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 sense in arresting a pastor or someone just praying God to pray. What what are you saying? Are you saying that we must just sit in our house and 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 and, and, and start with hunger? What people they are going to church to cry to God, you know, for God to do something in their life, and you are telling them that they they they, they are wrong. Who are you? Because you are having money now, you want to say you are right? What? No, they want to no. help. They want to help those who are being taken advantage of. No, there is no one taking advantage. Taking advantage, if they want to help the people to take an advantage, then they must let the churches, you know, when people register, registering church or opening church is where they must pray all there. Okay. All yeah, right. people are going to those church because of the, the problem that they're having. And yeah. if they really want to help people, they must also target the problems of the people hmm. by helping the people. Yeah, okay. it is not. It's not by going to the pastor and arresting the pastor who will stop the thing. No, thank pastor, you so much. Open thank you, my brother. All right, then there we are. But um, if we go back to the beginning, this is where this whole issue is. Um, like they are saying, unfortunately, my time is almost up. Uh, those who are calling in, you can come through when the free your mind guys come in. But um, it's about what is causing people to have so much faith in the churches unless there's a crime that has been reported or committed. Let me take this one. It's persistent. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Let me just finish this minute. All right. Wanda, yeah. Look, churches, we can track them whatever. Now, look, if I want to start up a business, it must be registered, isn't it? You see, the cancer of churches in Namibia, I think it is the right body to deal with this. You see? Yeah. The police came, but the council of churches, churches in Namibia, what are they doing? They're supposed to come up front and tell us, because I checked, they represent 1.5 million members, 90% of Namibians as Christians. Mm. If it's true, you see, they're supposed to come and say, look here, this is a channel to be followed. This is because there must be a policy, what, how a church would conduct itself. Now, don't, don't yeah. but how can you deal with a situation where I can walk up today and say, I've been shown the light, I have, I have been called, and I need to preach. Can you stop me? Because you no, can't you prove can, whether I'm trying, lying or you, I'm not. Can you, can you, you stop can do me? That. You can do that, yeah. but what I'm saying, for us to have the situation to, the, the situation to be controlled, mm. there should be a body which is supposed to take charge of that. You can be called today. 
if that Council of Churches are the bo- you can go there and say, look here, I received a call from God. I must start. Then they tell you, fine, it's not a problem. Register. These are the procedures to be followed. You see? Mm-hmm. Because what we are seeing here is I can come up and put up a church. Tomorrow, five years ladies are in I impregnate them, you see, or I surrender their money, or I just in, put something where it is not to, like the, the people who died in Karango. Mm. You see, mm. who should we blame? Because the police must come in. They should come in. They will not leave that case like that to say, no, what if the pol- police could have said, no, we did not, it's their choice to go to that church, let them die. What yeah. does the public have said? All right. All right, we, sometimes we must just uh, direct the seat where it is. Just John, of this, I think thank you so bring, much. Uh, you have now taken much of my time. So that, we, <laughs> All right. yeah, so that we can ask her. All right, thank, thank you. you so much. All right, this uh, whole thing about church, it's about spirit. You can't control that. You can't control the wind that blows. To me, it's invisible. It's in, it's, you can't touch it. And uh, where we might be arguing about this until Jesus himself, who wasn't a Christian, comes back. Because Jesus was not a Christian. And we are here haggling and arguing about um, something that the Son of God wasn't part of. <laughs> Chicken, why, why are you sniggering? <laughs> You're saying something that the Son of God Jesus was not. Jesus was not a Christian. Remember that Christianity came long after him, after he was gone. Yeah, but that's not how we perceive Christianity. As mm. far as we are concerned, Jesus is a Christian. <laughs> what are you talking about, one? <laughs> as we go to church to worship Jesus, because we are Christians, don't confuse us. You go to church? No, me. Ah, which to do what? Do you go to? Me, I go to Emmanuel. Emmanuel, there I can find the tender. The rich black Emmanuel guys church. go there. Which, which, which one is there? The one in uh, uh, Freedom Land. That's where I got confirmed. Me and all my tenderpreneur friends. All of us at the same time. Emmanuel. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that there's such a church. It's called Emmanuel. Baby, do you know? Uh, no, I don't. Baby, you're from where? Kavango, right? Yes. Yeah, Joseph, did you say he's sort of pity, sort of hate? You believe him? <laughs> self-pity, self-hate? Mm. I don't get it. That guys from Kavango region, they suffer from self-pity and self-hate. <laughs> and uh, a psychosis of inferiority complex. How did I miss this information? I guess he's talking about himself or what? Complex. Uh, I think that's a global problem. Inferiority complex? Mm. That's not a Gavango problem. That's a global problem. That's a Disho problem. What do, what, do, what do you mean? Don't you think he's suffering from inferiority complexes and superiority complexes? Uh, yeah, that's his superiority. That's new. I know about inferiority, but his superiority, that's new. I think he's up and down. Oh. It's like fluctuation. Oh. Mm-hmm. No, there's superiority complex, complex where you've got an inflatable ego. Uh. It's, too, it's too big like a parachute. You, yeah. know, you know those people when they walk, they walk. It's like they are not the just stepping on. Think of the state house. Yeah, it's like they are walking on oxygen and not sand. You can say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like they created the world and the earth <laughs> and you owe them everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what is called superiority. Com- com- inferiority. No one else does anything better than they do things. Ah. Inferiority is where you are hiding all the time. I imagine in a classroom, uh, there is always this guy who is not too confident, even if he has, he has got the right he answers. He has the right mm-hmm. answer. Yeah, he's like he's not so quite um, sure whether. Is it the same thing with the low self-esteem, or is a whole different kind thing? of? Yeah. Oh. So that is what Disho is describing you. Oh. Himself. <laughs> Don't worry <laughs> wow. about you. <laughs> worry <laughs> about him. <laughs> That's an All interesting right. one. Mm. All right, guys, enjoy. I'm sure. out. Mm. Welcome to the free.